Hello guys, welcome for another video on the Nasson restoration. My name is Rob. Um, this video I will be replacing uh, the return rollers. At this moment the steels are still on, already replaced a few at the last Nasson day at the Orloan War Museum. So this is one of the steel ones, a late type, when the rubbers were uh, running out. And uh, the early type are fully rubber, but that got burned off in the 2019 fire. Um, yeah, it took a few years for the molds to get made and uh, to make the rubbers on the original steel rings. And we pressed them on and now it's time to install them. So as you can see we have pressed the rubbers on, uh, I'm gonna paint all the bare parts. And then uh, they are ready for installing. I'm gonna do that at the museum itself, they have uh, like a few Nasran days in the holiday period, uh, four to be exact. I'm gonna put the dates down in the description and uh, when this video is released so now you can see it uh, I think the first one already happened because uh, when we're recording that's next uh, weekend on a Sunday and I already have another video planned so I have to look if uh, what order I will release it but yeah, there will be a few other opportunities uh, to come to Overloan at the museum and uh, watch me work at the Nashorn. And then you can also uh, ask questions about it. And if you buy some merchandise, you can uh, take a look in the back of the Nashorn as well. So I hope to see you there when you have a chance to come over. And hopefully by the end of August, so the, the last day we will have enough on day will be the 28th of August. Hopefully around that time we were also able to uh, start driving again with the Nasson. But yeah, I cannot make any promise, so we will have to see what the possibilities are. Here on the outside it does look a bit rough because some of the rubber is over the edge of the steel band and some isn't. So I'm only painting the parts that are exposed. I don't think I stirred well enough.
first part is to lift the track up uh, high enough so that we can clear out the wheel. Um, that is for this wheel with the jack. So now I have to move the jack back uh, to be able to lift this one off. So in order to take it off, there's a cover plate here with a grease nipple. I'll have to take the grease nipple out. Of course, I'll clean it up so that uh, the dirt stays out of the, the bearings because the bearings are going in the other wheels. And, uh, so the location of the grease nipple, that uh, same thread, we have a tool for it. Is the same model as originally in the manual and that presses the cover plate out but of course uh, first I have to take the circlip out so this is the circlip And this tool is still a bit longer, I had it quickly made, but uh, it's easy enough to shorten it to the correct length when we're finished. But now I want to get this done first, so that we can start driving again as soon as uh, the shaft is ready. not coming out straight so it's clamping itself down but we'll just straighten it out with a hammer carefully and then we can continue probably a little bit of paint in the way And that's it. Then there are two possibilities for uh, the wheel how it's attached. Uh, either with a circlap, but I guess that pro uh, proved to be a little bit weak. And this one is held down with two bolts and a plate. So that's a Probably a later type. I haven't found the proof of being it, uh, it being early or late But thinking about it, it makes sense that this is the late model because it's stronger So this is the plate two countersink uh, Bolts are in it. You also have different ones They don't have the countersink. They have normal bolts 
and then the cover plate has to be domed otherwise it won't fit. Um, to get the wheel off there are two possibilities if it's uh, not very tight I can tap it off with a copper hammer the copper is to protect the steel from uh, getting damaged um, if it's very tight I'll put a strap around it hang a smaller jack this is 10 ton I hang a 5 ton jack in the strap and then I can press it off So this one was not really tight, that's a good thing. Make sure there's no sand inside. And then next part is to take the bearings out, again clean the dirt to keep it from entering uh, the bearings. There's also a circle up on this side. I'll do it uh, above a cloth so that when a bearing falls out it doesn't, it doesn't fall on the dirt itself and to protect uh, the bearings I will use brass because that's a lot softer. I have to start on the other side because there I have more access to the bearing. And when that is out, this one I have more access to. This is the back side, and then this is the front. I'll do the back first. So you can hit the bearing with steel, but you have to be careful. So bronze is a lot better to do it with. I'm always going back and forth since the bearing can tilt a tiny bit and then it gets stuck and then it won't go down. So like this it helps it going down better. And then at the last you can hear the sound change and that means that it is uh, completely down. Seal plate. So that's it for this side, went in easier but yeah there's always uh, a little bit tolerance on the whole size so that makes the difference. I put a little bit of grease in this groove so that dirt can't get in. <laughs> And then to lock 
the screws in place, I'll put a center in the, near the slot so that can't come out. Circle it back and then the wheel is finished. And of course the grease nipple, where did I put it? So this is the way to uh, replace the wheels, especially one in the field, in a factory uh, yeah, you could easily split the tracks, take them off and do it with multiple people, but in the field uh, yeah, you don't want to do more work than needed. Splitting the tracks and putting them back on is also a lot of work and I guess when you do something like this in the factory it's more going on with the vehicle so it makes sense to do more work on it and take the tracks off. <laughs> So this is the most difficult spot, the tracks is uh, interfering with the fender. And there's the least amount of room. Uh, dit is uh, een stukje onderhoud. We hebben 2019 brand gehad. Dit is de rubber allemaal eraf gebrand. Dit zijn de latere model stalen wielen. Dit zijn deze en dit zijn de vroege stijl, vroege type rubber. Dus die zijn we nou terug in zetten. Maar aan de andere kant is echt schadeherstel. We hebben een boom geraakt. Een boom geraakt. Ja. Ja. Maar als er een andere tank voor staat die jouw sleep van 62 ton, die staat minder snel stil. Je ziet de rups recht voor liggen, op de, bovenop het spatbord. Dat is het kromste stuk, zullen we zeggen. So, this one has the style with the hex bolts. I'll show you a close-up picture. So you can see how this type looks, but for the rest it's the same as the one with the countersunk bolts. Thank you. 